Hi, everybody. Hello, Oz. I have my, my, Hello. I have my arc Hello. setting is very low. You're all jelly dolls. Let's fix that. Ah, much better. Okay, so let's see. Um, I don't have a lot to cover today. Uh, we have we've done a couple of viewer updates since we spoke last. We did the we got the 64-bit viewer out and updated. We then updated it again with the voice viewer. Um, note of caution in the voice viewer taking the SL voice from that one without the accompanying viewer changes will not work. Um, we, we closed some security holes that were open because of the way those two components communicated. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a need. You need the viewer changes to get the, get the, uh, to make the viewer, the SL voice work. Um, there is another voice SDK update coming, um, but I don't uh, Vivox is giving us a fix that apparently only affects Max. Um, the, uh, let's see, other, cohorts we've got in flight. Let me bring up my list. We have a maintenance cohort. We have yeah, my list is there it is. Um, we have a media update cohort, which is basically an update to the CEF plugin and some other things having to do with in world media. Um, that brings us up to date with the latest Chromium. Uh, and we should very shortly have another update for the uh, the rendering project viewer and another one for the 360 project viewer. So lots of lots of stuff in flight. Um, Did you guys have new to say about? The estate stuff. Estate stuff. The estate management tools. Yeah. Um, yeah, they got kind of backburnered for a little while, but I had a feeling. we'll we'll get back to those real real soon now. Um, we had a, we had a couple of high urgency things that came up, um, but we are we're not going to lose track of that one. It's we're, okay. We're back to it. So it's it's not it's definitely not going to be a permanent shelf. No, 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 definitely not. Um, uh, that's that's on our list of nice things for landowners. Uh, and yeah, I could actually... use those tools right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, right now is not on the table, I'm afraid, but I, I get it. Um, and we'll we'll get back to that. Um, let's see other stuff. We're getting closer to being able to put out a project viewer, a a, a, a larger scale viewer for um, Animesh. No timelines predicted, but we're getting there. Um, and uh, Pretty soon we will have a viewer that can take advantage of uh, higher resolution clothing textures and skin textures oh, that's and all scary. that. So up to 1024 instead of just 512. And that's a prelude to and may come out coincident with um, being able to apply um, bake textures, the system bake textures on meshes. So you'll be able to say um, this face of this mesh object should get my torso te texture or this should get my arm texture. 
and then whatever it is you've whatever wearables you have that affect the, those textures will get baked on and you'll and you'll get those those bakes on on that so you'll be able to apply a a tattoo on your mesh uh, body and so that'll be kind of cool um, how well the UV maps match, of course, will have an effect on how things display, but that's not something we can do anything about. Um, so that's that's it that concerns me just a little along. bit though. The idea of putting 1024 textures, I just worry that you're opening maybe a can of worms on oh, we have people doing, you know, ridiculously large textures on multiple prims on hair and stuff. Right. Um, it will be interesting to see how it, how well it works. Uh, it, you know, your, your avatar rendering cost will go up significantly if you're using higher resolution textures. Um, so it won't be completely free or anything, but, um, but it, it will, uh, it will work. But mostly that we're putting that in place for, um, you know, people who want to do larger, larger bodies uh, or larger body parts that really need the extra resolution. I, I, I think it's very difficult to argue that you that you really need that for um, human scale figures. I'm sure there are many Second Life users who would disagree with me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But that's I would true not be about one of almost them, anything but, I say. Yeah. But, uh, um, but that's that's coming. Um, my only other agenda item is that uh, I wanted to I wanted to say uh, we have uh, the HTTP asset fetching has now been out for a few releases. Um, I believe most of you have integrated at least in some version of your viewers um, this summer and I'm not going to pick an arbitrary date but sometime in June or July maybe as late as August but this summer uh, we will remove support for fetching those asset types through the old UDP path through the simulator uh, I thought you were going to do that sooner that's um, one of the reasons I came to ask you what sort of your timeline on that yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not in a huge hurry to do it we've got a lot of other work going on um, but yeah, but <laughs> I didn't have the, the viewer out then, so <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, I promise that. So I'm, I'm giving you like the, you know, four months notice kind of, kind of thing. So, um, I, I'm not going to pick an arbitrary date. I will, when we get close to the date and we actually have built that simulator and started doing testing of it, I'll tell you which simulator version it is and that, um, and what will happen if you try to use those interfaces is nothing. So um, old viewers that don't support HTTP asset fetching for, for those assets won't work. Uh, yeah, it'll be on. Sure. Uh, so look for it on a DD probably late spring. Uh, and Agni in the summertime, sometime. So we are gonna we are gonna do that. Um, we will probably be doing a similar thing for some of the old inventory messages, but I I don't have and and I'll before we get to it we will publish what messages those are going to be, um, and we'll probably have a viewer update of our of our code that removes some of those messages as well. We're trying to. Trying to work on making inventory more robust and more reliable, and uh, all that. Um, and one part of that is going to be right now. There are multiple ways of doing some inventory operations. Uh, the goal is to, and, and what that means is that there's multiple code paths that those operations might take, and therefore the opportunity for them to work differently depending on how you do them. Um, and that is that is the road to unreliable software. So we're going to try and 
prune that down. That will probably be a multi-round effort um, where we might do a round of it and then leave it alone for a while and then do another round of it and so on. Uh, but the goal is to make inventory much, much more robust and and hopefully better performing and all that good stuff. So, um, so we will be, we'll be, we're getting started on that effort now um, in terms of uh, picking what the first round of stuff will be. So when when I have something more definitive on that, um, but that too will be a way in which uh, we're going to uh, evolve the technology in a more reliable direction, but that's going to make some old things stop working. So, um, and I think that's that's all I had on my list of things I definitely wanted to talk about today. So the floor is open. Um, uh, Stats, please. Oh, yeah, I could do that. Uh, it's just because we've had a release out now for a little bit, and I'd like to get an idea of our crash. Rate. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, Arc 10? Depending on depending on how long we spend in this meeting, I might even be able to do it after we after we get out of here. I will. I am trying not to prolong this meeting. <laughs> um, Arctan is another one that we're we're getting rolling on. Um, uh, we're still at the trying to construct really good measurements of what the impact of various rendering features is. Uh, I have more expertise on that available than I did have before. So um, that's a really good thing. Uh, and we're, we're going to try and collect a whole bunch of data about on a, on a wide range of machines about, you know, what exactly does it really cost to have uh, extra skeletal animation or what does it cost to have um, uh, a zillion triangle attachment, or what does it cost to, to be using um, different kinds of alpha layers? Um, and uh, then we will try to adjust the avatar rendering complexity calculation to more accurately reflect what impact it really has. It's, it's not a simple thing, um, and it is not true that our numbers will always accurately reflect what any individual sees as the rendering impact of something because um, one of the things we've already seen is that um, we'll often get very different results from different cards right so you you might it might be that on one card or even one manufacturer's card doing alpha w one way is slightly better, um, whereas on another card or another manufacturer, different version of software, um, you get exactly the opposite. So alpha masking works better on one, alpha blending works better on the other. Um, so we're going to have to play with the numbers and try to get something that looks like a sort of average across what lots of people are getting. and lots of people are doing. It's very difficult for us to tune for any one. Uh, in fact, we don't really make any effort to, to tune for any one card or even one group of cards, because if we look at what video systems people are using, um, there is no sweet spot. <laughs> there's there's it, What we get is a zillion different versions uh, different different cards, and no none of them have a dominant position. The most popular cards are still way down in the low single digits in percentages. Um, and you know, there's this. It's it's basically there is no there is no nice curve where we can say we're gonna gonna try to make it really wonderful for the people on this on the high part of this curve. Um, there's no curve. It's just this enormous, long, almost completely flat. Instagram. So 
but we just can't we, we can't optimize for anything there are too many of you and you're you're all different but then we knew that about second life residents that they're all individuals <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, so then that's a good thing uh, but it turns out that the hardware you're running is all different too Can you give us a status update on Linux? Uh, the status oh, update. Oh yeah, on... I I heard a rumor that you're fixing Linux. Really appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks. Okay, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the status update on Linux is that um, I need to publish the repository where we're going to be ta taking patches and try to get. Uh, which is ac actually already out there. It's Linden Labs. It's on Bitbucket. Linden Lab viewer dash Linux. It's not quite merged up to the very latest viewer release. I'll do that. Um, but uh, the goal is to change our build backend so that it tries to build that as a Debian package, which we sort of have a skeleton for now, but we haven't um, we haven't uh, turned it on so that it's visible. Um, and uh, and then try to get people to help us with patches. There are there are a few libraries that are going to be real problematic. Um, I, I won't attempt to sugarcoat it. So uh, that's uh, we will try to get that in place over the next few weeks. Um, I, I'm as usual not going to assign a timeline to it. It, it, uh, bluntly, it is not a high priority project, and right now I've got a whole bunch of super high priority projects going. Um, some of which you guys I've not talked have about, a, and some of which I can't. Do you guys not have a dedicated Linux developer? No, we don't even have an undedicated Linux developer. <sighs> Gee, sounds like us. <laughs> I mean, the problem is there's a lack of Linux developers yeah. at the moment. So, like, we hear that you're looking for contributions, but, you know, we're we're sort of lacking in Linux dev as well. Right. Um, uh, who's it? Tonya did a, a, so has been doing some experiments. Yeah, um, experiments. We'll see how that work out. I mean, she's Mac, right? Right now, she's even experiments is, is good. So, um, I would not. I would I would encourage anyone who's interested in thinking about helping with that to not restrict themselves to I'm only going to make contributions if I can make the whole thing work. Uh, that's almost certainly too high a bar. Um, well, that typically has been your bar, hasn't it? I mean, generally speaking, when you ask for contributions, well, you look at the finished be, product. It will be the it will be the bar in that any change that anybody suggests um, will have to pass QA on on the Mac and Windows builds, right? We won't take any change that in any way negatively impacts the other platforms, but that shouldn't be too difficult to avoid. Do you envision some sort of ad hoc team where someone from Linden Labs is sort of the corraler of, of the people that are submitting claims? Yeah, but the one of the holdups we've got right now is that I, I haven't I haven't picked who that should be. So I, in the past, it has I have done all of the I have basically been the front line for for reviewing and coordinating contributions. More recently, I've started spreading that around developers. I'll pick somebody and say, here, you you work with that uh, developer. So, for example, right now, Graham is working with Jonathan on the project he's doing, camera presets. Um, but uh, I, I have taken on a bunch of new responsibilities over the last several months, um, and my time is getting hard to parcel out. So it, it probably won't be me. Um, but as I said, right now, pretty much everybody on the team has got something 
really, really important to do. And uh, Bill, I can afford to let somebody take a few minutes off to get up to speed on where the Linux viewer is. It's going to be hard to move it forward. So um, there are folks within the lab who want to make it happen. Um, unfortunately, they're all real busy too. So we're we're trying to do lots of cool things to release during our 15th anniversary year. So uh, we're pretty busy. Uh, there's a couple of questions in local. Uh, no, it's starting with. Oh yes, mirrors, mirrors, mirrors. No Seriously. chance, not happening. Next, uh, um, the 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 Linux issue is right now is mostly that you, you can't even start to build it because most of the libraries won't build. Um, so we need to get the libraries all built and compiling with. 64-bit and using the new build mechanisms um, for ensuring that the compiler options that are the same across everything. Um, where our my hope is that we will, the intent is that we will try to switch what used to be called the standalone flag and is now called the use system libs flag in in CMake, so that you're relying on the system. Um, to provide most of the libraries rather than us having to build them because that makes getting the, uh, but that means we have to take, we have to make it, make the viewer code work with whatever version of the libraries is out there on uh, either Jesse or Stretch, whichever we decide to target. At this point, we should, we had been saying Jesse, we probably should shift it to Stretch. Um, and no, I'm not interested in hearing about other Linux platforms that would be easier because I have a I have a menu of things that my build firm and operations team are prepared to support for me for doing builds, and that's the choices. Uh, it's the Debian series. So, um, well, the asset. HTTP switchover has happened in the sense that the software is all out there and it's all working. We will withdraw support for the old method sometime this summer. Yeah. Um, Tarball means so, that we have to build all 50-something libraries, and I'm, I'm no longer willing to so what you're saying, Oz, about the HTTP switch is that we rushed and rushed and rushed to get that release out, and we could have actually waited for another six months. Uh, but this way, your we users had a whole will have had, your users will have had, you know, several months to get upgraded on, which we all know your users are not very fond of doing. <laughs> Well, actually, we were kind of counting on you flipping that switch to um, kind well, of get rid of all the old builds. <laughs> in in due time, in due time, um, we we don't we don't have an easy way to measure that back. Um, in theory, I could, but I haven't. Uh, let's see. I, I probably missed some other questions back there in chat. So if yours didn't get answer, answered, um, feel free to repeat it. Uh, uh, Naran asked, um, rigged alpha actually casting proper shadows. Actually, Anara is first. Yeah. Anara does this. Um, Let's see, recap on the approach to a lie worth mentioning, Rearchy. Yeah, um, so um, we, we, as part of the whole Arctan project, we will be looking, in addition to um, 
avatar rendering complexity formulas, some of those same formulas also are an input to land impact, or at least variations on that formula. We will be looking at land impact um, and how we calculate the, the rendering components of that. Um, obviously, we will have to be extremely careful about how we transition from one land impact formula to another. Rest assured that we will be doing that in the most conservative possible way. Like we will we will study what the impact would be on the world without ever having any. But both calculations in the simulator run both on everything so that we can so that we can compare what the results would be, um, and we'll we'll make sure that it has as small an impact as we possibly can. But the goal is to change some of the broken incentives in how we're calculating. So the yeah, most obvious example is that adding multiple levels of detail to a mesh model makes its cost go up. Um, we don't want that to be true. We want you to have good multiple LODs because that makes everybody's rendering experience better. Um, and uh, so we're going to try to come up with a way for of accounting for that, that incentivizes better content, um, both in terms of reducing its maximum complexity, but also in terms of allowing it to have reduced complexity models without that costing you. That, that should basically be free or even beneficial. Right, exactly. We will reduce the cost if you have proper lots. So. Um, but that that's going to be a <clears throat> that's a, because we have to do it in an extremely conservative way so that we don't um, you know blow up the world by having a, suddenly have massive amounts of content be returned. Um, we're going to be doing that very slowly and very very carefully. We'll we'll give you updates on it as as changes are hitting the grid, but we're we're nowhere near changes hitting the grid yet. So, but we're we're very tuned into how how perilous this is. Um, one of the things that we're that we're um, committed to to doing is making some relatively high risk changes to higher taking some risks we would you know two and three years ago not have been willing to take because we think we can't make second life. As much better as we want to without without doing that. So we're gonna we're gonna stick our necks out a little bit. Hopefully, it will turn out to have been worth it. Well, I think I think if we were careless, we could actually make it dramatically worse. But we're we're trying not to be. Um, I, I, I think I understand your concern, Beck. Uh, I, I think there's, there's obviously a trade-off for having, between having, uh, allowing content that's a little more expensive, um, and uh, allowing content that makes the world that much cooler. Um, my hope is that the uh, performance and uh, and power that Animesh gives you, even for things like attachments and, and pets um, that are around a lot, it, that they will perform and look so much better than the um, than the workarounds people are doing to make up for the fact that we don't have skeletal animation for non-avatar objects, um, like having 
15 or 25 versions of the object and flipping transparency layers around, um, it means that the performance that end users will see will actually get better with Animesh. But trying to measure that is it's kind of tricky, <clears throat> but we're working on it. Um, we will. We, we have already made the decision not to hold up Animesh release uh, to wait for the new complexity form and land impact formulas. We're going to go. We're going to decouple those projects, which means that the cost of Animesh along may change along with the cost of everything else in the world um, when that happens. Um, probably will change, but. I actually suspect that it's not as big an impact as people think it is. I mean, we've had people doing tests where we have, uh, you know, dozens of Animesh things running around animating, and uh, performance impact isn't that bad. So I, I think that um, they would be a lot worse if they were being done in some of the old ways. Uh, I don't have any pointers, um, but it's basically it's basically the ability to make a rigged mesh that's rigged to the avatar skeleton, only it's not on an avatar. That's that's the simplest way to express it. We use the same skeleton. We we don't make custom skeletons available. There are a whole bunch of bones. You can move them around any way you want to with an animation. Um, so you've got a lot of bones to work with, and you can use them to animate anything. Yeah, eventually we certainly want to be true that, that um, the relative cost of animation versus alpha flipped animation is, uh, is appropriate. And we think it's actually much cheaper. Yeah, there we go. Thank you for the pointer, Anar. Um, I'm more than happy to get contributions for any fixes like that that you want to come up with, Naran. I I'm in a better position having. Having gotten a rendering developer back from Sansar, I'm in a much better position to take them than I have been over the last few years. Ah, okay. Well, um, Worley, if you'll email me a pointer to that, I'll make sure that we get a look at it. Thanks. Put that in somebody's queue. Um, we do have a, a, a viewer with a bunch of rendering fixes trying desperately to get out of project viewer status. So uh, there's a good place to put it right now. Uh, I don't. I don't have the list in front of me. I mean, some of them are just things. Uh, let me. I think we've got that out as a project viewer, don't we? Let me look. Uh, if not, then we will have shortly. Yeah, the render channel, and there are release notes. So that's that's the release notes for the latest update. Um, and there's there should be a five one two update coming soon. You can tell that that one's behind because it matches the 
the first three digits match the current released viewer. do with this. All right, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to, that, that's more detailed than I have time to read during a meeting. Uh, yes, we are most interested in open JPEG updates. Especially ones that get us up to the current maintained version of, versions of open JPEG. But so I will definitely uh, hook you up with Graham on that. Yeah, make a um, patches should generally go in either storm or open, and I don't really care which. Usually, my intent was that open would be about process and build systems and whatnot, and storm would be for functionality changes, but I don't really care. We can we can also move things around. Um, it's, it's not that I didn't care about rendering things before, it's that I didn't feel confident enough that I was qualified to make them work safely. And now I've got somebody I can hand that to and it'll work. Yeah, you should. If, if you discover you can't make issues in open or storm and, um, and you think you ought to be able to just drop me an email and I'll fix it. That I can do. When do we get toggles for projectors to prevent them from casting shadows using up one of two available shadow slows? Uh, that's been on the list of interesting changes, but um, I just don't have anybody to work on it right now, Nuren. Yes, I know, it needs the server-side part. And right now, an awful lot of server-side development is going to other things, I'm afraid. Actually, one of those that's coming is there will be, and I know this doesn't sound very exciting, but it's important to our support folks is we're going to introduce a new cap uh, that will return the um, currently valid abuse categories and, uh, you know, the categories for abuse reports. And uh, we will, once once we get that out, um, that will be out in a, in a project viewer, or rather in a, in a release candidate viewer um, sometime very soon. And I'll highlight it at one of our meetings when it's there. Um, uh, 
I would love to hire more devs. I, that's at the moment not in cards. Um, the um, <laughs> uh, so it will that's a that's a change. We'll really appreciate it if everybody picks up quickly because um, it kind of drives the support folks crazy when they're when their backend system can't match up the categories properly. I, I didn't say that early, but um, it will just make it will make the poor, overworked uh, people who are on the other end of the Arlon, uh, uh, the abuse report pipeline much happier. There, there are certainly other people on the other side of the AR thing, um, and they actually do an, uh, an amazing amount of work and, uh, and do an amazing job uh, under very difficult circumstances. Uh, so for, for, for very good reasons, it's not really possible for us to give you feedback about what happens on, as a result of a, an abuse report, but things do happen as the result of abuse reports. Nope, it's, well, that first email you get is automated, but that's not the end of the, of the end of the line. Uh, no, no comment, Willow. Actually, at, at our at our uh, our conference that we just had last week, we got a presentation from the governance team about about abuse reports and how many they handle and how they break down by categories and all that. The numbers were pretty amazing, and they they really do handle an enormous amount of stuff. Are there new issues? The new voice seems to be working pretty well. It is better. And if you're on a Mac, it spatial voice works, which apparently, which I hadn't noticed didn't work until I got the version where it was fixed. And then I was like, wow, it's really much better. Uh, well, if they're playing music over the voice channel, yeah. <laughs> and that will be different how. Okay, uh, if we if we break this much early, I will have time to 
go make myself some coffee before my next meeting. So, is there any possibility of one Abby, one voice setting wherever they are? Oh, uh, the distance scaling isn't isn't working right for you. Yeah, um, I I have to tweak those a fair amount myself. Okay. It does seem to work better in this new viewer, actually. What's the quick question, Noreen? Oh yeah, the poser thing. Right. I do want to. I do want to work with you on that. I'd really like to get. I'd really like to get the uh, the in-world um, animation and pose editing feature that that really would be awesome um so i will get in touch with you about that um, and we'll get try to get that started again now that we've got 64 bit out uh, i i feel a little bit more comfortable with uh, attacking viewer issues and i'll definitely get somebody engaged to work with you on that one um, it's a great feature i really like it um, there, there are a couple of things we'll need to change to make it um, protective of people's uh, intellectual property, but it's it's a great great feature. We're gonna we're definitely gonna want it. Yeah, I think the the spatial voice works better on the new on the new voice than in in several ways than it did before. All right, uh, let's call it a meeting and I will see you in two weeks. Thanks everybody.